Today's feast, that of Christ the King, is a relatively recent feast, liturgically speaking, but not a recent idea. We recall in Holy Scripture how after our Lord had multiplied the loaves of fish, the loaves of bread and the fishes to feed the crowd of 5,000, St. John says that they came to our Lord to make him king by force and that he fled in order to escape this. Now that's very interesting to someone from the south such as myself because no one comes to visit unless there's a free meal. But imagine, simply filling their bellies with something to eat and they want to make him king. Imagine what they would say today with our welfare system or in a communist system. We also recall that of the events of Palm Sunday when our Lord triumphantly entered into Jerusalem and they hailed him as king. That he was come to set them free at long last from the oppression of the Romans. Now as Catholics, we certainly hail our Lord as king quite rightly, as he is the only king by nature and by conquest. That is to say, he is God, therefore he is king by nature, king of all creation, and by conquest in view of the redemption. He has won the battle for our souls. We can look at the Vespers Antiphon taken from the divine office for this feast at the Magnificat and says, And he hath on his garment and on his thigh written, King of kings and Lord of lords, to him be glory and empire forever and ever. Now certainly our Lord must not be king only in the private sphere, but also that of the social sphere, that is to say families, businesses, cities, nations, governments. Charity begins at home is the old saying. So therefore we first have to love this king and to love him in himself as the source of all good and the perfect ruler. We cannot expect politicians to enthrone our Lord in our government. They have already separated the government from his church and have sought to remove any visible influence of him in the public eye. Our Lord's kingship must start very close to home and that it starts in your soul. Our Lord wishes to be the king of our souls. He wishes to reign there governing, ruling all that we do and all that we are. And he does not share this rule with another. The prophet Isaiah says, I, the Lord, this is my name. I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to graven things. And indeed, how graven our hearts are. They didn't make themselves. God did but how covetous we are of them and how we can, in fact, make them an idol for one motivation or another. Now, it's true. It is foreign to us to submit to another. Our biggest obstacle to advancing in the spiritual life in sanctity is ourselves. We are our own worst enemy because of our pride. And yet we take a look at our Lord who does not seek to come violently into our souls because he's not a tyrant. He's not a dictator. My yoke is sweet. My burden is light. We know so well. Come to me, all you that labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you. So he says in Holy Scripture, we are a labor to our own souls. But our Lord will not stand on his rights. Even when we dethrone him from our souls by mortal sin, he waits patiently for readmittance. He is polite. Behold, I stand at the gate and knock. Not, behold, I'm going to break down the door whether you want me here or not. So indeed, how can we come to know this king better. 
Well, certainly by reading and meditating on the Gospels from Holy, in Holy Scripture. It is not a Protestant thing to read Holy Scripture. The Catholic Church is the owner, the copyright holder, you might say, of Holy Scripture. But we certainly can look to the sacred liturgy, which paints a picture for us, as it were, through the prayers and the texts used in the Mass, giving us a conception of the heart and of the face of the King. We read the introit from the Mass of the Sacred Heart. The thoughts of his heart are from generation to generation to deliver their souls from death, and to feed them in famine. In other words, the eternal, unchanging, ever-present thought of the Sacred Heart is you. (coughs) To deliver you from death, the death of your soul. The death that comes by sin. The death that results in losing the virtue of faith, by infidelity and even heresy. He is always thinking of you and desiring your soul's sanctity and to deliver it from its enemies. To feed them in famine. I think it is fair to say that if we are not in a time of great famine now, from the look of things relating to the church, one would be very hesitant to think how worse it can still get. What else could there go? What else could be lost? And yet despite the desolation, the ruin, despite the appearance that all is lost, our Lord, in the mercy of His Sacred Heart, has seen to it and continues to see to it that your souls are given the food needed for your spiritual life by giving you Catholic priests in these terrible times. The food, indeed the good medicine of sound doctrine and Catholic sacraments. And this king, this king enthroned on the cross, this king, this king abiding in the tabernacle, does not forget even the least among us. Because he is always thinking of us individually. You are not part of some generic mass. And he asks for very little. He asks for our hearts. God Almighty, God incarnate, wants the poor, miserable hearts of his creatures that rebel against him. He wants us all to himself, and he will not tolerate a rival love. And in exchange for the miserable thing we call our heart, he offers his in exchange. The heart of God and all that that implies. A communion of reparation for nine consecutive First Fridays. A monthly hour of reparation. Indeed, a rather small price to to pay for the immense gift that we stand to gain. But as if his heart isn't enough, he has given us his face. Our relationships with other human beings become closer when we have met someone and we have a face to put with a name. A face makes that person familiar to us, easy to recognize. And so it is likewise with our Lord. The love of the Eternal Father for the Son, who is looking for all eternity at this face of His Son. One of the promises that our Lord gave to Sister Mary de Saint-Pierre concerning the devotion to the Holy Face He said, by offering my face to my eternal Father, nothing will be refused, and the conversion of many sinners will be obtained. Now, every one of you that sits in this chapel today 
myself included, have had this king show his face to us. That's why we're here. And he desire us to know him better still. Because if we don't know the king, it's not because he keeps himself aloof and hidden from us. He has put himself at our disposal because he wants this intimacy and friendship with our souls, with his subjects. And friends know one another by sight and they share the intimacies of the heart. How many of you have come today with burdens on your soul from your spouse, from family, from work, and a multitude of other things? This king is willing to hear anything you have to say about what those things may be. Again, another promise that he gave. As in a kingdom, you can procure all that you wish with a coin marked with the king's effigy. So in the kingdom of heaven, you will obtain all you desire with the precious coin of my holy face. Now, quite a beautiful thought. For through both the sacred heart and the holy face, our Lord makes himself the currency, the ticket to our sanctification and salvation. This king who reigns from the cross, Renyavi Talinio Deus, as we say in the Vexilla Regis, empties the treasury of heaven for your soul. He's willing to empty the celestial coffers in order to give you coupons towards the cost of sanctifying and saving your soul. And this has the potential not only to lower the cost, but certainly as Americans we're always looking for a good deal, but practically to eliminate the cost because God's grace does the work. And that's true of all things of the spiritual life. It would be quite foolish to spurn the recommendations of this king, the king who wept tears of sorrow over your sins and whose heart is inflamed with charity for your soul, whose face looks upon you from the beatitude of heaven regarding you. This same face who, looking upon St. Peter after he had just denied our Lord, caused the same saint to convert and repent of his denial. Peter went out and wept, as the words of sacred scripture. Tennyson wrote, Authority forgets a dying king. Never forget your king and what he has done for your soul. Now, as a practical way to inculcate this practice, a very simple way would be for your Thanksgiving after Mass to use your missiles by taking the votive Masses that are found there, the votive Mass of the Sacred Heart. And for those of you who have it, the votive Mass of the Holy Face. Why so? Because these votive Masses come from the missile, as we know, and as I have mentioned in another sermon, the missile, we could say, is the printout. It is the EKG reading of the heart of the king. What you read in the texts is the transcription of the heartbeats. And these words of the missile, these words are from the sacred heart and spoken by the holy face to your soul. So why not turn it around and take his own divine words as a prayer towards him. And finally, going to Our Lady and asking her help. She saw the Holy Face for the first time at the birth of our Lord. And she had the Sacred Heart living within her for nine months. She will show us, if we ask her help, how to approach this king, because she is the queen mother. 
She will bring us in before the king who so ardently desires our hearts and to not have our gaze divert from his. Indeed, we can imagine from a human perspective, imagine a man and woman, a husband and wife going out to dinner. And in the course of the meal, the husband proceeds to explain to his wife how much he treasures her, how much he loves her, how much affection he has for her, what he's willing to do for her, that he loves her above all others, and that's why he has chosen her. And after all of this explanation, she leans in close and asks, can you pass the ketchup? (laughs) Such would be our reaction with all that God has said and done for our souls. To say, thank you, I'll see you next week. No regard for his generosity. Going to Our Lady, therefore, the mother of this king, she will teach us how to be loyal and loving subjects of this king. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.